I have been thinking about what if Pose was a title track since Queendom 2 ended, and I even created like album concepts based on the Queendom stages. Originally, I was gonna make this into a Twitter thread so all the images I edited would be like teasers. That was before I revived this channel, so unfortunately, you guys are going to see essentially a slideshow as I talk about the different concepts. Before getting completely into the video, I just wanted to add that I got to do a fan call with Lucembol after their fan con and it was so wonderful. I didn't get to say everything I wanted both because of time and because my Korean language skills are very limited, but I hope they understood how proud I am of them and how I want to see them keep growing for a long time. They deserve the world, all of them do. Unfortunately, I can't give that to them, but I can make videos about my hopes and dreams for them artistically at least. I'm so grateful I get to be a Ruri Gotpit and Engdu. I don't know how to fit that in there. Long story short, Luna, we freaking love you in all your forms. So back to the matter at hand. Pose as a title track. Like I said, I created album concepts for this a while back, like probably December or January. It was before any of the girls won their lawsuits, that's for sure. I intended this to be a double concept album, both an album where Pose got to be the title track and their post-freedom album. For that reason, I need to warn you guys, I created the concept pictures before Heju updated her stage name and the only reason why I won't re-edit it is because I don't remember what font I used and the color editing and mic removal was very tiring, so... Please excuse that. For concept one, we have the Pose stage concept, so the streetwear hip-hop Versace style. I wanted the font for this concept to look like graffiti, so I put some extra effort into the editing for the font and logo. Speaking of the logo, each concept has a different interpretation of the logo, which is the symbol for Pluto. Pluto generally represents death, but it also represents rebirth, which spoke to me. Oh, by the way, the album name is Pluto. Concept two is the Shake It stage. The aesthetic of this stage is actually what inspired the second half of the album's sound. You may notice I went with an Art Deco style font, so two and two together makes... The last Queendom stage I use for a concept is the PTT stage, representing concept Concept 3. What I really enjoyed about this one was getting to use Heejin's handwriting font, Lunar Orbit. I love using that font whenever I can. The fourth and final concept uses a 70s retro inspiration for the font and the Lukna photoshoot. Might as well put that to good use. You'll also notice the Pluto symbol isn't like the others and that's because I decided on an alternative interpretation of it that better suited the 70s look. On top of that, I further incorporated their representative colors as a soft light overlay filter. Some turned out better than others and that fully comes down to how strong their colors is as a filter. The album opens with Chang'a's Side D Pleasures as the intro track. I think I would rather call it Beginning Pluto after the album title. Also, maybe it's because I'm rewatching Mystery Incorporated, but the intro reminds me of that a little bit. This isn't really a performance type intro like Hash and Midnight, but I think it would definitely make for a cool teaser, similar to the editing on the X1X teaser. <laughs> Now onto the title track. You already know it's gonna be Pose and I shouldn't have to explain why, that's the whole point of the video. But let's talk about the music video. It's not gonna be too different from the stage concept. I'm thinking it starts out with a red carpet, photographers, fans screaming, nothing revolutionary. Then the Luna girls show up disrupting everything. I think it would be fun to have it be like a heist video, so after that we see the girls making a plan to steal something. The first group of girls, so Eve, Jinso, Heejin, Heju, and Hyunjin, are a distraction, while a second group, Chu, Hasel, Kim, Lip, Goon, and Vivi, have infiltrated the event itself in gala dresses. Yojin and Cherry are then the actual burglars blending into the crowd as wait staff. While group 1 burst into the event in the second verse, group 2 make sure they're doing everything they can to create panic while Yojin and Cherry slip away. In my head, I have this incredibly clear picture of Hasul on a table in a gorgeous dress singing her heart out. The bridge is obviously where some sort of security arrives to break things up, and as group 1 get detained, Cherry and Yojin get exposed as well, trying to leave in the commotion. When the final chorus hits, we see a replay of the events where Yojin managed to pass whatever they were stealing, in my head as a giant diamond, to Vivi, who manages to leave the event quietly. The song finishes on Vivi in her car, taking the diamond from her purse and admiring it. Then there's an outro scene where Vivi arrives back to the place where they planned everything, entering the room to see all of the girls there waiting for her, including those who were detained. The video ends with someone spray painting Pose and the Pluto symbol on the screen. Has it been done before? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean I can't want Luna to do a cinematic video all the same. This might also be slightly influenced by me re-watching the live-action Pink Panther movie not so long ago. But I think it would be really cool to have a music video teaser similar to Red Velvet it's bad boy with the character cards mixed with the boys the stealer teaser. I think that's the one I'm thinking about. I vaguely remember that on my timeline some years ago. Flesh, flesh, 
Now, one thing I think companies have forgotten is giving rewards for streaming the music video. Do I believe in streaming like it's a job? Absolutely not. But hitting 1 million, 5 million, 10, 20, 50 million views is a lot more exciting when you know it means you're going to get something in return. Companies discovering that you can buy ads and inflate views has done K-pop such a disservice. But I think 1 million views in the first 24 hours earns us a behind the scenes sneak peek, 5 million drops the choreography's last performance video, 10 million is the behind the scenes video, 15 million is an extended and music video cut with more story or a b-roll video similar to YO by Y's one in the sense that it adds onto the story by having both extra scenes that didn't make it and something like lore for the diamond. 20 million is a b-side choreography music video. These view goals are attainable for an OT12 release within the first two weeks, maybe even within the first week. Pretty sure Flip That got to 35 million in a week. Of course, these goals can be adjusted up and down based on expectations set by the last release, but I miss when reaching a streaming goal actually meant reaching a goal and getting something in return. I wasn't even around for it, but that's what they did with the extra music videos for one third era like Every Day I Need You. Moving on, the first B-side is Gugudan's Shotgun. It coming on shuffle is actually what inspired this entire thing. I just started thinking, wow, this would sound so good with Pose, and I was absolutely right. I could easily see this getting a short music video of its own that's kind of like a prequel showing more of them preparing for the heist. The song is structurally just similar enough while creating its own musical narrative that I think it's the perfect follow-up. I can't believe how badly we failed Gugudan. They should have been huge. <laughs> After them is CLC's Like That. I did not realize how mature the lyrics for this song were until I looked them up to try to do a line distribution, but as of 2020, all of Luna are adults, so maybe it's about time they start doing more mature theme. As badly executed as it was, Sweet Crazy Love English version was definitely moving heavily towards that, so I just love Deep House and Future Bass. And I found out that Singing in the Rain is Hyunjin's favorite solo, at least right now, so she'll back this up, I think. Also, this song would go crazy in concert, beyond even the collapse that was Chu's Heat fan him. Originally, I had Pixies the Moon in this slot, but I don't want to overuse it, so I went on the hunt only to end up right back where I started. Kinda. It's still Pixie, but the song changed to Breath. I honestly think it might be an even better fit than the Moon. The strings in the intro will become even more relevant in later songs, making this the perfect song to begin our transition into the second part of the album. <sighs> As the latest song on the list, Red Velvet Soon was originally another song. I don't remember which, I think it was Oh My Girl's Vogue. Originally, my black cat, Queen Is Nah, and this video had a lot of overlap in songs, and that's part of what I like about this series. It forces me to discover new songs. I wasn't sure about Soom at first, but that bridge sealed the deal. I think Red Velvet, EXO, and Luna should get into construction or engineering because they sure can build a bridge. <laughs> Switching the vibe into an obligatory English song. I think it's kind of a no-brainer that Luna would do an English song on a full-length album. So I chose Twice's Icon because I thought it suited the vibes of the album, and especially that I ain't going nowhere, I'm an icon, feels so relevant in a post-BBC life. It's a bit more trap compared to the jazz inspiration we were getting into, but I think it's still fitting. The background instrumental still have some remnants of it, just hidden behind the trap beats. It's also just a great callback to the first songs of the album now that we're moving into the second part. I ain't going nowhere. Speaking of moving into the second part, Uchisan and the Black join us with their one and only B-side. Honestly, I kind of view this a little bit as a unit song even within the album. Like the day unit, Hee Jin Hyun Jin Kim Lip Jin Sol Hye Ju Eve. I don't want it to be a unit track, but if it was, that would be the unit. It brings in some more mature themes and shows off different vocal styles and tones. Are we ever gonna get the Black back? I think we should. <laughs> Billy's The Eleventh Day marks the official shift into the jazz-inspired portion of the album. It has a similar cozy vibe to You Are, but it's distinctly less comforting, slightly disturbing even. I think it would be really cool to see this as the promoter B-side with some light choreo. Add Billy to the list of future K-pop engineers because they can also build a bridge in a final chorus like nobody's business. It also adds in some slight hip-hop elements with that record scratching in the outro. Oh, it would fit Luna like a glove. <laughs> Speaking of jazz, I think you guys knew Dreamcatcher's Jazz Bar had to be coming. 
This is why I've been trying my hardest not to include it in other projects. It's another song that would be featured every other video if I didn't actively put in the effort not to. In my head, I think of it as kind of a sequel to Around You and prequel to Seesaw, and I can hear Hyunjin, Go and Cherry and Vivi so clearly in it. If Orbits didn't have such a difficult relationship with ballads, they would recognize that a song like this belongs with Fall Again, Number One, D1, etc. in the Luna Ballad Hall of Fame. I was heavily inspired by Heejin and Hyunjin's performance at KCON to include Mama Musta Kalkomani on the list. I knew if I was going for a jazz inspiration, they needed to be in there in some capacity, and I also needed something that would naturally pick up the energy for the last songs of the album, and once I saw that performance on my timeline again, I knew that was it. Kim Lip, Jin Sol, Eve, Heejin, Hyunjin, and Yojin can easily carry the grittier, more explosive vocals, while the other girls can handle the softer and rap parts. I can hear Heju in my head doing the intro bit. You guys kind of need to trust the vision on this one. Leaning fully into the more conceptual is Girls' Generation's Showgirls. If I had to assign a song to the night unit, Hasel, Cherry, Chu, Vidi, Go, and Yojin, it would be this one. Forget the more sultry vibes of jazz bar, this builds on the big band, almost cabaret influence heard in the Kalkomani. It feels almost dizzying in the verses just to suddenly grab you in the pre-chorus. It's kind of like if a stereotypical circus was a song, more so than any song I've heard that's actually referencing a circus. Originally, I had the song as the closer because if you play the album in reverse, it would start with Welcome to the Show You've All Been Waiting For. And if you play chronologically, the outro makes sense. But I had to move it because of the actual finale song, but it still kind of works. And the actual finale song replaces the placeholder that was Boa's All That Jazz to become Uji Sonyo's 12 O'Clock. It technically doesn't count as having the same artist twice because Uji Sonyo the Black and Uji Sonyo do don't sound the same at all. This song mixes the big band jazz influence with the classical cosmic sound Uji Sonyo are known for and Luna include on almost every release. It's a very dynamic song and in my head marries this album more than nicely to Luna's previous work. <laughs> The album ends with an outro because I really wanted to include Yena's Love Is Over intro for its mix of the jazzy strings and more modern trap elements, but it had too much of the strings to flow nicely into pose, so it became an outro. I also believe deep in my heart that if Luna do a full-length album, they'll have an outro. Also, ending the album with Before You Walk Away From My Life, I Want You To Know, is a raw move and one I would respect immensely, especially if their next intro builds on it, by starting with I'm With You or something similar, the complete opposite, whichever way they want to go. So that is my take on if Pose was the title track for a full-length al Luna album. If you want to know what it would sound like as a mini album, then it stops at Zoom or Icon with Kiss Your Lips as a physical version only bonus track, in which case it would obviously not be a unit song. And that's it, that's the video.